Alright, so this is going to be a Costco sale item review of the Cuisinart Digital Air Fryer Toaster Oven. Alright, so this is normally um, $199.99, about $200. It was $40 off, so basically about $160 plus tax, depending where you live, your tax will be different. In California, it's about 9.25%, or at least where I am, it's different in other areas of California as well. So keep that in mind. Alright. So first thing we're going to look at, let's go ahead and look at the boxing. So here you see air fryer, toaster oven in one, precise temperature and time controls, All right? Easy present, uh, presets for your favorite foods. Fryer smart, what? Smarter with air, not oil. All right. Oh, fry smarter. Sorry. Okay. There you go. You got the model number here. <clears throat> Okay, so it says for your safety and continued enjoyment of this product to read the instruction manual. Okay, you can see you can air fry, you can dehydrate, everything in between, low temperature options. Okay, so let's see, you can read all of that, I hope. Hopefully it's not too blurry. Okay, full size performance, large capacity lets you air fry up to three pounds. Um, toast six bagel halves, roast a whole four pound chicken, or make a 12 inch pizza. So, okay, three year warranty. Food is for representation only. Of course, it doesn't come with food in the box. All right, for household use only. Okay, so I'm not supposed to use this for business uh, cooking. If you have a cooking business, I guess. All right, here you go, or a restaurant. Okay, favorites your way, bake, broil, pizza, roast, dehydrate, proof, and hello, what, with or without convection, uh, air fry, toast, bagel, and keep warm. Okay, they got different dials for the function, dishwasher safe accessories. Um, usually these baskets are a pain to wash. Um, you can d uh, put it in your dishwasher apparently, I don't know how well it will clean it off, but all right, large digital display, non-stick interior with light, easy to clean, easy to monitor food as it cooks. Capacity 17 liters or 0.6 cubic feet. All right, fast flow, air technology, whisper quiet operation. We'll see. Um, I'm gonna be comparing this to the, I think it's made by Panasonic, the one that, um, oh my God, my I'm brain farting all the all over the place now. Um, Sit, Gordon, uh, Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, so I'm gonna be comparing it to that, um, that air fryer, as well as the Ninja Foodie thing, the one that does air um, pressure cooker and air fry. So we'll see. Or they don't call it air fry; they call it air crisp. Um, this side looks to be about the same. Oops, I messed up the box. Okay, here this says something different. So let's see here. All right, they show different things to cook. Premium functions, endless variety, air fry, bake, broil, pizza, roast, toast, bagel, keep warm, dual cook, low, dehydrate, and proof. Okay, cooks with hot air, no oil. Engineered to quietly deliver 1800 watts of high velocity, high heat air for delicious results. Convenient air fry presets, precision digital controls. Okay, fast clean up. Okay, let's go ahead and open this up. I know I've been talking too much about just what's on the packaging outside, but okay, so let's go ahead and cut open this tape. Okay. I got lots of tape to seal this all together. So let's go ahead and cut all this tape off. Okay. Hopefully I'll be able to get all of this in camera. It's really big. Okay. This device is very large, so you're gonna want a lot of counter space for this. All right, let's open this up. Okay, so on top we got, it looks like a baking pan kind of thing. So we got this. I'm doing this, the whole unboxing, so you can see if you need to um, repackage it for some reason. Okay, there's some tape on it. This is probably like the drip tray or something Okay It's like that nice and textured you can see the reflections if you're wondering about the room. This is my sister's old room. She moved out so 
I'm using it as a recording area now, but she left a lot of stuff here. All right, got this cardboard on top. Okay, and here's the fryer. Actually, it's a bit smaller than I thought. The box made it seem ginormous. It is still pretty big, but uh, not as big as I was thinking from the thing. All right, so I'm probably gonna have to lift it out from the bottom. So let me get in there. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so I accidentally picked up one of the trays, so here you can see. There's that tray at the very bottom. Okay. So we got this tray at the bottom. Let's set that aside. It's not sealed with anything. It's just like that. Okay. Then we got the fryer basket thing. All right. And this one is taped up. Okay, all of these have warnings, so if your kids choke on it, you can't blame the company. All right. Your kid should have read the label if they choked on it. Make sure your kid reads the label. <laughs> okay. All right, then we got some documentation down here. I'll throw that box aside. Oh. Okay, we got this device here. I guess we can zoom in now. Oops, too much. Okay, let's see here. Actually, instead of zooming in, I'm just going to lower this so I can see what's going on. Too much. Pick it up one. Okay, so let's see. How is this thing wrapped in here? Is it taped up? Nope. Okay. Uh, maybe a little bit. Okay. Is it going to break if I roll it backwards? Eh. I'll roll it on its side. Okay, there is some tape holding this, so I have to untape this. Okay, and there's one of those air or oxygen pack things. Get that out, put that aside. Get this out. Okay, I'm gonna roll it over. Okay. Some people like to leave those protective plastic stuffs on them, but you don't want to do that, okay? You want to peel these things off. Here you can see they have this. Make sure to peel that off. If you want to keep it, keep it somewhere. Stick it on a bag. I don't know if you're planning to put it back. Why is there a white? Okay, speck. I thought that was stuck under the screen. That would have been bad. Right, so they got this as well. You don't want to leave this on here because it'll likely melt and burn. Though it doesn't say to take it off, so that's kind of weird. Okay. Ow. Oh, let me turn off my charger. Sorry, it was probably making all staticky sounds. Okay, hopefully my phone... Uh-oh, I'm running out of um, uh, recording. Let me delete, clear out my recording. I'll be back. All right, sorry about that. I emptied the trash from my phone. Oops, I forgot I accidentally started the charger again. Okay, so again, let's go ahead and continue removing the stuff. There are some tape tabs on here. You want to take those out as well. Okay. Peel those off. Again, if you want to keep them, stick them to a plastic bag or something. Okay. Let's go ahead and peel this off as well. Okay. It looks like there's two more tape tabs at the bottom as well on this tray. So we'll peel that out as well. Okay. Some people aren't careful and they'll actually start the cooker with tape and stuff on it and then they'll burn things so you want to be very careful about that okay so as you can see this slides out okay so they have a separate um crumb tray or grease catching tray it's actually pretty shallow though so you want to make sure to check it after each time you cook just to make sure it's not overflowing overflowing overfilling because i'm pretty sure if it goes beyond this drip tray you're gonna have a very hard time cleaning it all right, so it opens like this. Oops, it's spring-loaded as you can see. Okay, and there's a rubber flap here, down here. Um, I guess that helps prevent stuff from leaking out the front, but then if it overflows, it's gonna fill up the whole thing, I guess. Okay, so this spring thing is, okay, it's okay. It's just cause I was tilting it back. It's pretty strong. Um, it looks like there's also a thing here so it knows when you open and close it. <clears throat> 
Looks like there's some carry handles on the bottom here, so you can lift it from the sides. All right, so the best place to lift it is from those plastic handles. Let's see. Um, I think this is just to wrap the cord on. And you have this zip tie thingy here to hold the cable together. Um, it comes out pretty easily. You just lift it up and it looks like you can actually thread it through. Okay. All right, and it actually stays attached on there. Um, I don't know if it's easy to remove this or not. Okay, I think if you want to remove it, you kind of have to twist it. Yeah, and then you can take this out, kind of. It's a little bit tough. I'm just gonna leave it on there though, but it looks like if you really wanted to remove it, you would twist it and then you can take that out. Okay, so yeah, and the cable has this. Actually, I don't know what that's for. It doesn't I don't know how you would wrap it on there. It's very short. Um, I guess I'll find out what that's for. Okay, so let's go ahead now. And open this up. We're gonna put this stuff in here. So we got this basket. Um, I don't know if there's a, let's see here. Okay, it looks like this one goes upside down like that according to the picture. So if you're putting this in, you want it to go that way, okay. Well, I'm doing this according to the picture. So I'm gonna read, read the instruction manual after and then we'll go from there. And then it looks like this tray holds this, okay. And then that slides in up there, okay, just like that. Okay, and that catches all the stuff that leaks off the fried stuff. So I'm going to be testing with some chicken wings and some um, french fries. So I'm going to compare it to two other air fryers I have. Let's go ahead and zoom down here now. And we're going to just go over all these stuff that's uh, all the little booklets and stuff. If you don't like that, you can go ahead and skip over. And hopefully eventually you'll see me doing the cooking. Okay, so they have a thing here to register the cooker. So they tell you to register it using this QR thing. Okay. Um, I don't see the serial number or anything there, so I was like, hopefully I didn't accidentally give people mine to register, and then they'll register it as theirs, but, okay, so here we go, what is this? Um, let's actually do a normal zoom so it's clearer. Okay, so here you go, they have some quick operation. Place the desired accessories in position recommended in chart on page 2. Use functional dial to scroll through functions. When desired function is flashing, press the function dial to confirm. So these actually have buttons in here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> press start stop to begin cooking when display with displayed settings. To change settings, turn the temperature dial to choose the temperature or shade. Um, so I guess that's if you want light toast, dark toast, or whatever. Press temp dial to confirm. Okay, turn temp dial to choose time or slices, so you can choose how many slices you have in there. Um, temp time dial to confirm. Let's press defrost, so they have a defrost option. Fan speed button, you can change the fan. Start and stop to begin cooking. When countdown timer reaches zero, the oven will turn off, okay? Important, do not throw away read before operating your new digital air fryer toaster oven. Keep for future reference. These helpful tints are intended to be okay. You can read all of that. Okay, so basically it's telling you to read all of this. You go to change the time. So they tell you how to change the stuff. Temperature. Okay, you can kind of read all of this over yourself. Um, so there they got the baking, drip pan, oven rack, and air fryer basket. I know I read those in the wrong order, but whatever. Okay, so <clears throat> here they show for here. Um, this is the different ways you can arrange it. So this is on the top rack, and then this position two is on the top on the top or middle rack, and then this is on the bottom one. Okay, so if you're doing toast, or so you use this if you want to broil, if you want to dehydrate, air fry, or warm. Okay, so here you can see like what you're planning to do and then you can go based on that. So they should actually put this like somewhere on the thing that would make more sense if they put like a label like on here, I don't know, somewhere where it wouldn't burn something that wouldn't burn, just put a label there. <clears throat> okay, bake, broil. 
<clears throat> so if you use just the drip pan thing by itself, you can bake, broil, roast, um, low, I don't know what that means, low and warm. Okay, so if you're using the, I guess this is the metal tray, the one that has the, just the metal grates here, this one, okay. So if you want to do toast, bagels, bake, broil, um, roast, uh, proof for like doughs, if you want low temperature or warm, okay. And then if you put the air fry basket at the bottom, you can use it for broiling, you can use it for air fry and to warm. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, if you use the uh, drip tray by itself, then you can use it for baking, broiling, um, you can make fresh pizzas. If you want to do um, frozen pizzas, then you don't use that pan, you use the uh, one with the slots, this one, okay? So for frozen pizzas, for fresh pizzas, you use the one where it won't droop in, okay? And you can see, bake, broil, frozen, you can roast. Um, proof, low, and air fry. So you would probably want to keep this one handy just so you can know what settings will work well for what. Okay, um, we already went over that. Here's the air fryer chart. So here they tell you um, what temperatures to air fry and stuff. Chart below, okay, cooking times and temperatures for different types of foods. Um, if you put too big of a portion, then you can uh, toss it every so often just so that the air can get through. Okay. <clears throat> okay, smaller amounts of foods might require less time. For best air fry results, use the oven light to periodically check on food. Okay, um, air frying. Okay, with the bake pan, drip pan. For all foods below, we suggest using the upper position, position two for best results. Huh. Wait, use the air fryer basket with the baking drip pan for all foods below we suggest using the upper position okay so for all these foods they want you to put it on the higher one so bacon chicken wings frozen appetizers you can read all of that okay frozen chicken nuggets fish sticks frozen fries so I'm gonna try doing some fries and chicken wings but we'll see I'll cook them together usually <clears throat> when I air fry stuff I just put them on the highest temperature so I don't know this one has much higher temperature so the Panasonic one, I think it's Panasonic, only goes up to 390 degrees if I remember correctly, or 360. So this one goes up to 450 according to this. I don't know if it goes higher, but it shows 450 on the highest I've seen here. So these will probably make better fries and everything, so we'll see. Frozen steak fries, you see they set the highest temperature. Okay, hand cut fries, then they put lower 400 degrees, hand cut steak fries 400 Shrimp, 375, tortilla chips, 400, and vegetables, 400. So it depends what you're doing. Thin slices to, okay. There you go. Troubleshooting. So if your thing isn't working, if it's not turning on, um, if the fan, what, oh, if the fan's still on, it's that's normal. Okay. The light turns itself off. <clears throat> Uh, can I change my cooking function when the unit is already cook it, cooking? So, nope, you have to stop it, okay? Um, so here they have all that. You can read through that if yours is having issues. It might be something in here. The reason I show all of this stuff is in case um, somebody loses their manual. If I lose it or if I throw my manual somewhere or it gets dirty and it gets um, thrown in the trash or recycled, then I have this video to look back on, so... If you don't need that, you don't need it, but, um, yeah. Okay. Oh, it says do not put the crumb tray or oven rack in the dishwasher. Instead, hand wash with... So, the thing at the very bottom, um, I don't know what the oven rack is. Baking tray, baking and drip pan. Wait, what? So why isn't this, why isn't this dishwasher safe? So apparently these two are okay to be dishwasher. This isn't for some reason. I don't know why. It's all this is all metal. I don't know what's wrong with um, dishwashing. That maybe it's it won't do a good job. I don't know. Okay. So anyways, that's that. Let's go on to the instruction recipe booklet. So I'm just gonna quickly flip th through this again. I'm not gonna read all of this because this one is more if you want to see this and you lost your booklet or something 
So I'm just going to quickly go through this. Hopefully it's possible to read it. I don't know. Okay. I'm hoping these are different languages because... Oh, shoot. Okay, this is all... Okay, you guys are going to... Well, you're welcome to just skip through this whole pe part. But uh, I'm just going to quickly go through every thing of the booklet. Okay. There's a lot of pages, so... There's a good chance you're not going to need any of this. I don't think most people will read this. I think my brothers are outside saying they're hungry. <laughs> so, I better hurry. Okay. Okay, hopefully you guys can read all of that. I have different types of foods here. Dehydrate. I honestly feel like they should just give a link for this so that way I can just be like, here's a link to the website for this booklet, and then you could easily just read over all of it yourself. Troubleshooting and warranty information. Okay, so this one is all recipes here, so I guess. If you're looking for stuff to cook. Okay, hopefully all of it's coming out clear enough that you can pause and read it. Main courses. Okay. To make it fair, I'm probably just gonna cook four chicken wings in each, um, four chicken wings in each air fryer just to test, because that's gonna be kind of a pain. And then I have my brothers and my cousin. If they're all hungry, then we will all be taste testing and deciding which one's better. But the problem is I can't do them all at the same time, so I don't know how I'm gonna do it. We're gonna have a wait time in between. If I do them all at the same time, I have to use like different outlets all around the house. I guess I can do that. Okay, but I don't wanna, I don't know. I'm gonna air fry in the bedroom. Okay. Almost done. And then we will see. We're on the last page here. Cinnamon sugar dough bites. That sounds kind of good. Donut bites. Okay, so I think that's it. All right, so I'm going to plug this stuff in. I'm going to test. I'm going to air fry uh, four chicken wings in this, the Panasonic one, and the Ninja Foodie, and we're going to compare them. All right, so I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so because all of these... <clears throat> Devices are probably going to use close to 1800 watts. I have to use them on different um, outlets. So hopefully I got them all on different circuits, but we'll see. Okay. So this one we're going to go to... Where's the fry? I see toast, bagel, bake, broil, pizza, roast, dehydrate, proof, low, warm, dual cook. Oh, air fry is a whole separate setting for some reason. Okay, so we got that. I'm going to set the temperature... So this one goes higher temperature, as you can see, it goes to 450. The Ninja Foodie goes to 400, and the Panasonic one goes to 390. So we're going to see if that makes a difference. I'm going to air fry each one. I don't know if I air fry them from cold. The, the Panasonic one is already warm, so it doesn't count. I guess I'm going to uh, preheat them first. Okay, so we got that. There's the start, stop. It's kind of hard to see with no light here. There's this button to turn on the light so you can see inside. Okay, the only thing I wish is when you open this that it pulled the trays out because now I have to use some kind of oven mitt and this spring-loaded door scares me because if it's going like, look, it, I mean on a counter it will probably be okay but on the on the carpet right now, I don't think you should use this on carpet but uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully 
the heat of that isn't going to burn my floor up. Uh, we'll find out. Um, let me actually look at the bottom. I have to be safe here because I don't want to burn, melt my whole carpet. So I'm going to look at the bottom and see if it's going to get too hot. I might have to move it and put it somewhere else or find something to put it on top of. All right, I'll be back. All right, so assuming this is like all the other cookers, you want to leave some space around. All right, you don't want anything too close. This is probably too close. I'm going to move it over. Um, but anyways, I put it on a bake tray just to be safe. Um, it doesn't look like it'll get too hot, especially since there's plastic here and plastic over there. Um, but I just want to be safe. So, yeah. All right. So anyways, we're going to do air fry. I'm going to start it up. Oh, I probably should have done like the air. Okay, let me stop this. And let's see here. So let's function again. Okay, we got air fry. Oh, you can't change the air. So, so the airflow for air fry, I guess, is always just maybe the maximum. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start this and we'll let it preheat. Okay, so I'm going to go over now to the Panasonic one and do the same thing. Uh, preheat it. We'll also do the same thing with the Ninja Foodi. Right now I got this, I got three uh, drumstick or mini drumsticks, three wings and whatever those nugget thingy looking things are. So I'm going to put three of or one of each in each air fryer and we'll compare the difference. Okay, I don't know if this is going to beep when it reaches the temperature, but we'll find out. Okay, um, let's go on to the other air fryers. Okay, next in the race, oops, I kept calling it Panasonic, sorry, it's Philips. Okay, so next in the race, this is the air fryer we've been using. You can see it's all old and uh, greasy and covered in grossness, but uh, let's go ahead and start this also, 390. Uh, I don't want a timer. Can I get rid of this? Dang it. People keep setting the timer and then, so I have to always lower. I don't like having the timer. So we're gonna go, set it to 390, let it preheat. This one beeps when it's ready. And yeah, all right, we'll go on to the next one. Okay, so we got the Ninja Foodie one here. Um, oops, did we leave? Okay, no, that's just how it is. I thought there was some plastic there. So I set that one 400 air crisp. So we're gonna start this now. Why did it automatically set a 20 minute timer? I don't know, um, but we'll leave that going. Can I open this one? Okay, this one safety shuts itself off. So I guess maybe you're not supposed to preheat this thing. Okay, maybe I'm gonna just put each chicken wing in there for about five minutes, check them, and then um, and then we'll go from there, but it probably only needs like 10 minutes anyways. Let's go ahead 390. Okay Maybe we'll do like eight minutes. Okay Okay, I'm gonna set eight minutes on each one and we'll be back. Okay, so we got eight minutes on here I'm gonna open this and I need a air. I need an oven mitt because it's already pretty hot in here Okay, so let me get that and I'll be back. All right, so like I said this one I kind of don't like because you need like an oven mitt or something to grab this out. But I guess you'll need something to pull out the food anyways. And then the other thing is I don't know how safe it is if it's going to fall over. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to leave it like this and let's go ahead and grab three pieces of chicken. So we'll get this one. Okay, I'll grab this one. And we'll grab one of these big nuggets. I need to be kind of fair. This one gets hotter, so um, for the most part, I'll put, kind of put slightly bigger pieces. Okay, but uh, somewhat even because the wing is the smaller wing. All right, so we're going to put that in. Okay, close that up. We got eight minutes on the timer. We're going to start this and turn on the light so you can see in there. Okay, so that's what it looks like. It's cooking. We're gonna let that go for eight minutes. We're gonna do the same thing with the other two air fryers, all right? Okay, we're back at air fryer number two, the Philips one. I like this because you can pull out the tray and it's already like you can just grab the stuff out. So you don't need a separate, separate tool to pull the tray out. It's nice and easy. Too bad they didn't do that with the Cuisinart one, but uh, it is what it is. Okay, so let's get also a chicken whatever that thing is. All right, so three. This one, we put foil at the bottom, so maybe that's handicapping it because now it's even worse of a cyclone, but uh, we use it all the time and it comes out good, so we'll see. All right, eight minutes on the clock, we'll go. All right, next one. Okay, so now we got the Ninja Foodi. The lid's open, so it's telling me to shut it. 
you shut it, all right? There we go, we'll put these in. The one bad thing about the Ninja one um, is it only has this wire rack, which if you're putting things like french fries or something, you have to be very careful with the placement, otherwise they'll all fall in. Same thing with the chicken wing. If I turn this sideways, it might, there's a chance it can fall in, especially if it's a smaller wing. But um, yeah, other than that, we'll find out how it crisps and we'll see. All right, this one, I ran out of uh, counter space because the other counter is using the other um, circuit. So if I put it on the, uh, on the other counter, it's gonna burn it out. Normally I don't use all these appliances at the same time, so yeah. All right, anyways, we got eight minutes, air crisp mode. We set the temperature to the highest, which was 400, and let's go ahead and start. So this one is kind of nice because it shows the timer the entire time. The other ones, it waits, I think, after until the last minute, then it shows the seconds. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it turns out. And again, this one, if you open the lid, it shuts it off. Um, and then let's go back to the other one. Okay, so this one, as you can see, it says seven minutes. It doesn't show how many seconds. It shows the temperature as well. But this one, you can open it. As you can see, it keeps going, all right? Um, this one also, I like the basket design because that little wire mesh allows more air to circulate. Um, and the only thing is it's harder to clean this kind of thing. So keep that in mind. If you wanna clean it, usually you just burn off all the stuff. And then after that, you can kind of just scrape off the ashes. All right, let's go back to the Cuisinart. All right, so we're back at the Cuisinart. This one is so much quieter. It's it's actually very quiet. Um, sitting here, the Philips one is about almost the same noise level, if not maybe even slightly more. And that one is probably like a good 20 feet away or so. So yeah, so this one is nice. It's pretty quiet. You don't have to worry about too much noise. The other one is kind of like someone's using a hair dryer with a low setting. This one sounds like, I don't know what you would compare it to. It's like a, one of those really quiet washing machines, like the really quiet ones, or the dishwashing machines. There's some dishwashers that are super quiet, so that's nice. Let's see what happens if I open this. It says five minutes. Oh, it turns off. Okay, so it stops the air but it doesn't stop the cooking. Once you close the door again, it starts again. So I don't know if you can hear it. Um, I don't feel much heat on there. I don't feel too much heat on there. I don't feel too much heat on there. So this thing actually, for air frying, it seems to keep pretty cool. Okay, oh, okay, no, this, all the hot air blows out here. I'm gonna have to rotate this. That's a bad, 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 bad thing. Okay, so all the hot air is coming out of this back vent, and that means if you put this up against your wall, your paint here is gonna be taking all that heat every time you use that. That's a bad design. The air should be coming from the sides, or I don't know why, but no air is coming from the sides. All the air is coming from here, and it's a lot. It's like even from here, it's like um, it's like somebody's turning on a heater vent that's just blowing straight out the wall. And yeah, I don't think that's good. So if I use this, I'm gonna have to give it some good ventilation away from a wall. I guess that's why they put these plastic feet. So these plastic feet are probably just to prevent you from putting it all the way against the wall, um, which is smart, but that's still too close. I think if I, I mean, I can keep my hand here, but it gets really hot. So yeah, no, that's, keep that in mind. That's very dangerous. If you put this next to your wall, you're gonna burn up your, you're gonna damage your paint. Over time, your paint's probably gonna get discolored. Maybe it will start peeling. I don't know, but it, it's pretty hot. So you can use it as a heater in your room, actually. It's, it's a nice heater. So if you want, you can use the air fryer as a heater. You don't need to buy a space heater for your room. <laughs> Um, but yeah, all right, let's go back to the other air fryers. Okay, so we're back to the Phillips. So where's the air come from here? Is it out here? See like here, I can even kind of put my hand over this vent. It's a lot less air coming out, which um, I'm gonna say the Cuisinart, just from that airflow, it's gonna fry the food a lot better, but you wanna keep in mind, do not put it up against the wall because all that heat is gonna be bad. Um, it, it is gonna damage your wall. 
I don't know if you see this, I mean our house is old, but I think this is probably from the air fryer just blowing stuff over time. Um, but yeah, because after a while if you cook the food too much you'll actually see smoke come out of here if you burn it. Anyways, let's go back over to the Ninja Foodie and see where the airflow is coming from there. So we're back at the Ninja Foodie, three minutes on the clock. Air, ooh, okay. So the air comes from this vent back here. Okay, and it's also pretty hot. So in this design, because the heat is blowing straight up, I wouldn't put it underneath cabinets. If you put it under here, you're gonna be cooking your cabinet here, which will um, slowly weaken the wood. And that, that um, process of slowly weakening the wood, if you have heavy stuff in there, it's gonna slowly cause your, the wood to bend and you can actually damage your uh, cabinets that way. So if you're using the Ninja one, don't put it underneath anything. Um, and you probably want it in a good ventilated place with the window open just so you get some good airflow. Um, but if you want it to just warm up your room or something, again, you can use this as a nice uh, space heater. The, this one seems to push a lot of air out. So I think this one, it sucks all the air in and then it blows all the air back out there. That's a good airflow um, and also a slightly higher temperature. So I have a feeling this will crisp well. Hopefully eight minutes isn't too much. I hope I didn't burn um, 12 chicken wings because that's gonna suck, or nine chicken wings, sorry. Um, but yeah, all right, let's go back to the Cuisinart. Let's take a look with the light on. Okay, so we're back at the Cuisinart. Let's turn the light on. And oh no, they look burn. <laughs> so we're gonna stop it. It was barely eight minutes, almost eight minutes. So let's uh, stop that. So 450 was too hot or I just cooked it too long because of the higher temperature. I can actually see all the oil in there, but oh no. Oh no, I wasted three chickens. Okay, let's get to the other ones. Okay, we're back at the Phillips. It finished eight minutes. You can see uh, one of them got slightly burned, but they look okay. So let's go on now to the Ninja Foodie. The Ninja Foodie has 40 seconds left, but I'm gonna stop it since all the rest burned. Ooh, as you can see, it's nice and crispy. Ooh, woo. So I'm gonna say, um, you don't need eight minutes. <laughs> so maybe five, six minutes will probably be enough. But um, all right, let's go ahead and take them out and we will see the difference, so. I'm gonna have to line them up somehow. Let's grab this one. We'll grab this one. Okay, and the last one. Okay, this one is probably going to be the easiest to clean up. You got some straight bars, you just run the sponge over it, and then you have this nonstick rice pot type bowl that seems really easy to clean. The legs of this is probably gonna be kind of gross. But um, other than that, it looks pretty easy to clean. All right, let's go back over to the next one. All right, so we're back at the Phillips. Let's go ahead and take these wings out. You can compare the looks of it. Okay, you can see the difference. I'm gonna, to make it fair, I'm gonna eat like one of each of the same ones just to compare. Okay, so next we're gonna go over to the Cuisinart. Okay, so we're back to the Cuisinart. Look at these burnt nuggets. This is probably gonna taste bad, but I guess we'll see how crispy they are. Oh man, that was a bad idea. This thing, <laughs> okay. That kind of got stuck to that tray. Look, look at the difference, okay. So the Cuisinart, or sorry, the Ninja Foodie, the Phillips, and then the Cuisinart. Oh man, that was too much temperature. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing for sure, um, the Cuisinart probably will cook everything a lot faster because of the extra 50 degrees. Um, so that's probably a good thing if you're just trying to quickly get your food. But again, I don't like this. Let me see, can I close this? Okay, at least you can close it while it's open without an oven mitt, so that's nice. Anyways, let's go ahead and bring this to the table and we'll eat them up. Oh, and um, this thing, uh, it got a lot hotter now. So I wouldn't leave my hand on top of it. The sides are also pretty hot. So yeah, if you're cooking for a long time, these surfaces will get pretty hot. So you don't want to leave anything on top that can melt. That's very important, okay? Um, I think for all the cookers, you want to do the same thing. Don't leave anything on top, of course. 
all right the ninja foodie you can't leave anything on top because the way you open it the lid will just flop everything off um, but yeah even the Phillips you don't want to leave anything on top though that one doesn't get as hot as this one on top okay so we're gonna try these wings and we'll see definitely the burnt's gonna taste gross but uh we'll see the crispiness all right see you guys in a bit all right so we got this mmm Mm. Okay, I forgot which was which. I think this was the Ninja Foodie, this was the Phillips, and then that was that. I'm going to tell you right now, from feeling the crust, the Ninja Foodie might actually be the best. Huh. Okay, this one is burnt but soggy. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe on this one is more crispy. Yeah, the Ninja Foodie feels the best. Okay, so I'll eat the wings. Sorry, I contaminated all of them. But uh, I'll eat these wing-looking ones. We're going to eat the gross burnt one first. Mm. Aha. That I just feel that I'm cool. Okay. Luckily, it's not a gross burnt flavor. Still, still edible. Okay. It's still crispy, not not crispy like originally when I bought them from the store, but um, huh? Oh yeah, you can go ahead. You can try whichever. Okay, now I'm gonna try that. It has some burnt flavor, but all right, we're gonna try this one. Turned out good. This might be unfair because I burned it. Hmm. <laughs> One this really one's crunchy. more of a chewy, chewy crunchy, which is weird. I'm used to this one and I liked it, so I don't know. Maybe comparing it to that. Is that more of a chewy crunch? And now we'll try the Ninja Foodie. Hmm. This one has a lighter crust. Maybe I should have let it cook longer. But they're all nice and crispy. I like them all. Um, mm -hmm. They're all good, actually. So, I'm going to have to try fries next. Um, this one's I guess, more of a crispy, yeah. Yeah, the, this one that I accidentally Just burned. Crispy. Yeah, this one's a bit more crispy. This one's a little more chewy and crispy. And this one also turned out well, too. The Ninja Foodie also turned out well. So, yeah, they all, they all turned out well. So, if you want an air fryer... They're the all ninja foodie turn huh? out the best. Yep. So yeah, so if you want a air fryer, um the ninja foodie works well, but again, you have to what keep in mind the way the grates are. What time and temperature for the I just put the food? max four hundred degrees and they all I put them all eight minutes. The ninja foodie I stopped thir like forty seconds early. They're so really I shouldn't have cooked them that long. I don't know if I cook this one at the right temperature may or for the right length it would work out better. Um, I'll probably have to experiment with different foods just to see. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I kind of wanted to compare with higher temperature just to see. Um, but um, yeah, I probably should have set them to the same temperature <laughs> um, to make it like an even thing. The only thing is the Ninja Foodie I don't think does 390. I think it will go down by like 50 degrees or something or 15 or I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really check. I can check that next time. Maybe I'll do it with the fries just to keep things fair so that the only difference is the airflow, not the temperature. Um, but I also want to test the limits of the machine since the other machines can do it better at higher temperatures, it probably will turn out better. So a lot of times I feel it's not the airflow. That's the problem with when I do air fried French fries, it's more the max temperature, which the Phillips one only goes to 390 and it's, I guess, not enough. So we'll see. I'll try the fries again using the max temperature on each. And then maybe I'll do the same thing with the... And then I'll do the same temperature after just to see the difference. But uh, anyways, they're all good. So this one is only I accidentally burned it. <laughs> so, but um, they're, all, they're all good and crispy. <clears throat> I'm going to actually say, at least for the way I cooked it so far, this one turned out the best. Then this one and then this one. Even though I burnt this one, it's still good. <laughs> um... So I'm surprised. I guess air air fry technology is getting better, or maybe it's because the temperature is lower on this. Um, but definitely, I did feel more airflow coming out of the back of this as well as this. So that might be a contributing factor. 
Um, so yeah, we'll test with fries because I don't want to cook so much chicken. So <laughs> we'll try with a few fries in each one and we'll see how that goes. All right, we'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so my youngest brother's here. He's going to try the three chickens. Just take a bite of each one and tell me which one is like more crispy. It might be not as crispy now since you waited, but okay. Which one's crispier? This one's more crispy than that one. Really? This one I ate like more skin than meat. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it just depends what part you eat then, I guess. That one I burned, so it's not fair. <laughs> yeah, the burnt one's more crispy. <laughs> the burnt one's more crispy. Does no, it taste okay? This one's just about as crispy as the middle one. They're all about the same? Mm, the burnt one still tastes okay. Huh? The burnt one still tastes okay. I know. It's not like burnt. I was worried I overburned it. I was like, oh no, I wasted it. Okay. So when we tried it, these ones were actually better crispy. This oh. was the Ninja Foodie one. Uh, this one was the Philips one, and then this is the Cuisinart. I overburned it because that one has a 450 degree temperature, oh. and I cooked them. All, I cooked them all for uh, eight minutes. <laughs> At max and then when I when I turned the light on, I said, "Oh no, <laughs> too late." No. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then um, yeah, so then I stopped all the other ones around like after. So this one I stopped earlier, so it, there was still 40 seconds left. So this one cooked a, less time mm. by a lot. This one cooked less by a few seconds. And this one uh, cooked the longest, so <laughs> that was bad. I put the highest temperature and cooked it the longest. Okay, so I'm going to try... <laughs> well, I'll try fries now, and this time I'll do it more evenly, so we'll see. I'll do the temperature and I'll just monitor it, because I have a feeling the higher temperature will make the fries more crispy. Because a lot of times when I cook the fries, they don't get crispy enough, so we'll see what happens. Okay, see Alright, so we got six fries in here, various sizes. Um, this one, when it goes into sleep mode, you twist the function and then it turns it back on. Okay, so we're going to push this back in. We're going to do 450 degrees. I'm going to change the time to... Oops. 450, so we'll set that. Then we pushed, we pushed the button to switch to the time. I'm going to only do six minutes. Hopefully that's not going to overcook them, but we'll see. All right, we're going to do six minutes on each. Maybe I'll do five minutes on here and then six minutes on the other ones because this one is hotter. So we'll see what happens. All right, so we'll start this. Okay, and let's go over to the Phillips. So we'll see in here. That's what it looks like. Okay, we'll go over to the Phillips now. All right, so we're here at the Phillips. We got six fries. As you can see, there's a lot less space in this basket to fit the fries. So a lot of times you pile it up, you have to take it out, shake it around. On the Cuisinart, because there's so much more area, you probably don't have to shake it around so much. Um, but yeah, all right, we're gonna start this. This is a more fair test because everything's spaced out evenly. Um, but again, if you're cooking a whole bunch, the Cuisinart already is gonna be a better choice because the fries will spread out more. All right, so again, 390 degrees. We're gonna do six minutes and we'll start. All right, now let's go over to the Ninja. Okay, so as you can see the Ninja, you're gonna hate yourself if you cook fries on this because you can't just pour them all in. They're just gonna all fall through those holes and they're gonna end at the bottom. I don't know if you can air fry in the thing without it, but then you are gonna have to like stir them around or something. There's no airflow that will go underneath if you don't use this um, tray or whatever this thing's called, the wire rack. All right, so anyways, let's go ahead and cook them up and we'll see how it goes. Same thing, we'll power it up. Okay, we'll choose air crisp, 390 degrees. And again, let's do six minutes just like the other and start. Okay, so we'll let that go and we'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so as you can see, the fries are in there and it just finished the five minutes. I don't think they're done, so I'll put another minute. Let's go ahead and add another minute on here. Okay, and let's start it again. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be long enough. Maybe the fries need like uh, seven or eight minutes, but we'll see. You can see the oil, or I don't know if that's the oil or if that's the thing on top. Maybe that's the fan spinning that you can see in the reflection there. I don't, I don't know if that's the oil, but 
All right, we'll let it cook one more minute. Let's go ahead and check on the other one. All right, so the Phillips has two more minutes. Let's open it up and see what it looks like inside. They're still going. All right, so we'll let it keep going. Oh, only one minute left. I might have to add a minute to all of them. The Ninja one, I don't want to open it. <laughs> I'll wait till it's done, um, but we'll see. About a minute and a half to go. Okay, so it's been a minute. Uh, I'm sorry, my brothers are tugging out something right now, but uh, let's go ahead and try this on. You can see steam. You can see it's actually getting crispy. I'm gonna set another minute. Okay, we got another minute. Let's go ahead and start it up. All right, so this one's almost done. I don't think it's gonna be good enough. Yep, definitely not. Let's go ahead and give it another minute. Oops, just one minute. Or actually, give it two minutes. All right, and we'll be back. The Ninja Foodie one's also quite loud compared to the um, Cuisinart one. Um, but here you can see, okay, I didn't add any time to this one yet. The Phillips, I added two minutes. The Cuisinart, I added two minutes, but I started the Cuisinart with one minute less. So the Cuisinart will be seven minutes total. The Phillips will be eight minutes total. Um, and then we'll see what goes on with the Ninja. All right, it just finished. Let's take a look inside. Um, it looks like it can use another two minutes as well. So let's go ahead again. Air crisp. Two minutes. Okay, two minutes and start. All right, so we'll see you guys in another two minutes. All right, so it's done. I'm going to look at these. Maybe I overcooked them. We'll see. Okay, so we're going to take this basket out. And I'm going to actually put all the fries in here. So let me organize these here. Ooh. Okay, so we got the six from the Cuisinart. All right, we're going to go over to the next one and we'll see how it turned out. Okay, we're back at the Phillips. Two minutes. This is what they look like. As you can see, they cooked way longer, but uh, they are not as cooked. So we'll see how they turned out. I'm going to take them out and put them in this tray next to it. Okay. All right. So as you can see, the Cuisinart will cook it a lot faster. All right. The Ninja Foodie just finished. So let's head, over, head on over there and take a look at those. Okay, we're at the Ninja Foodie now. Let's open it up. Take a look. They're pretty crispy, so let's go ahead and get these out. Okay, I'm gonna put them over there like that. Okay. Whew. Hot, hot fries. Okay, so these also took eight minutes, eight minutes and uh, six, no, seven minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and give them a try. See you guys at the table. Okay, so we got the Ninja Foodie, we got the, um, Phillips and then the Cuisinart I thought they weren't going to be crispy enough so I put them in an extra two minutes probably one minute would have been fine so let's give them a taste all right there's nothing added to them we're just going to eat them straight up and see how they turned out uh-oh not as crispy as it should be <laughs> not like you didn't hear the crisp huh see that <laughs> So maybe I have to try different settings. It's really hot. Really hot. Okay. We're gonna try the Phillips. Not that crispy. About the same thing. <laughs> so I have to figure out what settings to put to make them crispy and not burn. Maybe I have to put a lower temperature and just cook it longer. I thought, the, than the, I thought the higher temperature would have made them crispier, but apparently not. Okay. Huh. Okay, I found Ninja Foodie. Oh, that's one. Oh. Hmm. Mm. My brother likes the Phillips. Mm. For some reason, the ends of the Ninja Foodie ones are more crispy. Oh. But the middle is soggier. It's weird. Yeah. Didn't cook it inside as much. Okay, I'm going to try the big ones now. By the somewhat big ones. Okay, so this one is from the Ninja yeah, Foodie. I think the Phillips turned Cuisinart. out the best for uh, Cuisinart, Ninja Foodie, and the Phillips. Let's try again. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. 
Maybe these need longer but less temperature. Need longer but less temperature. I think the Ninja Fruity turned out the best. Again. This one, the Cuisine Art one, mm -hmm. it has like a crunchy, but the layer of crunch is very, very thin. Mm. Yeah, because the higher and, temperature. Yeah. So I probably have to just cook them longer at a lower temperature. And then the inside is super fluffy. Yeah, this has a more crunchy outside. But it needs a thicker, crunchy layer. So this, I probably will set the temperature lower to match. Maybe I'll try that again with one fry in each one, <laughs> just for fun. I don't know unless my brothers still want to eat them too, but uh, they're probably full. What? Keep eating. You want to try it? Okay, I'll try that. Okay, so now I'm going to set them as close to the same temperature, and then I'm probably going to cook them for eight minutes each. And we'll see how that turns out. I like this one the most. Yep. Okay, so they like the Phillips one so far the yeah. most. So we're gonna try it again. Is that our old one? Huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Huh? The mm -hmm. Phillips is our old one? Yeah. Uh huh. The inside tastes a lot better with the hmm. Phillips hmm. than these ones. This one's. So maybe the secret's lower temperature. The Ninja we'll see. and the Cuisine Art, mm -hmm. it, the insides taste like, a pow like they're powdery. Huh? It tastes different? Yeah. This one is more like a Interesting. more soft mashed, mashed potato. potato okay. the... So we'll try lower temperature and we'll see. All right. So I'm going to put these back in. I guess my brother could only eat one each. So I guess I'll eat all these. <laughs> this time I'll put, I guess, just one, one fry for each of us in each one. So three. And we'll set them all around the same temperature if I can. And we'll try that. All right, so you guys all right, so we're back. We're gonna try cooking these all at about equal temperatures. This one doesn't go to 390. Um, the next one down is 375. So we're gonna do 400 and we're gonna cook them all at 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and start. Okay, let's go on to the Ninja, or not the Ninja, the Phillips. Okay, we're at the Phillips here. We got three fries. These are kind of small. I put one extra long fry in the Cuisinart, so there's four, if you're wondering. All right, so we're going to do the same thing, 390, and we're going to do 10 minutes. Go. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with the Ninja Foodie. Ninja Foodie, you can see three fries in here. It's already warm, set to 390. All right, I'm going to set this to 10 minutes, and let's go ahead and start. Okay, so we'll see you guys in about 10 minutes. Okay, so three minutes to go, and these are already looking over crispy, so even at 400 degrees, it's getting too hot in there, so I don't know. Maybe I should lower it to 375, but um, yeah, all right, let's check on the other one. All right, so this has three minutes to go. I'm wondering if the Cuisinart, I should stop a minute early because, of course, it's 10 degrees hotter, but uh, let's see here. Okay, so here you can see that's what those look like. The Ninja Foodies, I'm going to have to wait two minutes to go. Ninja Foodie, as you can see, two minutes and counting. I think I'm going to stop the Cuisinart a minute early because it looks like they're getting overly crisp. But we'll see if the 50 degree difference made a difference, if it's better or worse. All right, so we'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so we got a minute left on the <coughs> Cuisinart. I'm going to stop it just because they already look overly brown, as you can see. Okay, so we did this nine minutes, and this one has an extra french fry in it. So we're gonna see how that goes. I'm gonna leave that in there until the other ones are ready because this is overly hot. Maybe I'll leave it open to let it air out and maybe that will help it crisp. All right, so we'll go and check on the other air fryers. Okay, so we got a few more seconds on the Phillips. So see how it goes. Here you can see this tray caught a whole bunch of oil. All right, so let's open it up. We'll see how it looks. They're not unevenly burnt or anything, so we'll see. Okay, put those there. There we go. Okay, let's go get let's go get the ninja ones. Okay, we're here at the ninja. Let's pop this open. Oh, how come they move so close together? Hopefully that didn't affect it. We're gonna throw them up there just like before. Okay, and let's see how they compare. We'll see you guys at the table. All right, so here we go. Sorry, my brother had some Christmas stuff on. I didn't want to get demonetized, so. All right, let's go ahead and try the different fries. So 
Now we'll let them try it and then we'll see if they can tell the difference. I'm going to try this big one first. I think that cooked better than last time. So a little lower temperature. I cooked for 9 minutes. These all cooked for 10 minutes. It's a better lower temperature longer. Okay, my definitely, brother says definitely, yes. Definitely has a thicker crunchiness to it now, but it still has this one still has the like weird fluffy um, like powderiness to it. Huh. So I guess this one is too much airflow. Maybe it's drying it out. Maybe I have to put it on bake mode instead of air fry. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Right, so my brother, one of my brothers chose that one. This one is a lot smaller, sharper end, so it has more crisp than last time. Not really crunchy. That was so still bad. bad. This one, I don't have as much of a thick crust to it. Crunchy huh. as that one. I've been getting so we got a split. Mine. So mine this one was the Phillips and that one was the Ninja. <laughs> so this time the Ninja won one. But mm. this one has a nicer soft fluffiness to it instead of the weird powdery. I think I did I think I did like the Phillips one better too. Huh. huh. Well overall yeah I like the but um, again, normally in the Phillips, when I cook it, I cook a whole pile, so it doesn't turn out like this, actually. <laughs> Usually if I cook them all in a pile, it's harder, because you have to keep shaking it around. It doesn't, you can't space it out like that. So the Cuisinart one will be easier to space out. I wonder how it will be if you have them all kind of some piled up. But I think the Cuisinart one is probably maybe too much airflow, so it's drying it out and making it not as uh, fluffy. So maybe I have to try doing a bake setting instead on these and I don't know, but then that won't uh, circulate the air as much. So, so far by comparison, my siblings didn't like the Cuisinart one as much from the way it fried. For the fried chicken, uh, I might have to do a retest, but we had too much chicken already. So I don't know, but they're, they're not bad. It's just... If you're comparing all three together, then yeah, it like changes the you flavor can taste the difference. It chase it changes the flavor. Yep. Huh? I don't like it. So. I don't really taste the difference in flavor. It's just the texture for me. So I don't know. My brother said it changed the flavor. I don't know. Maybe the well, the Ninja Foodie one. I just started using the air fryers uh, thing today too with that test. I was thinking maybe the Phillips had more time to burn off whatever chemicals that are on the outside. So I don't know if the Cuisinart has something, but the Ninja one, that one also, the air fryer thing, I just used brand new, so didn't have any issues. So I don't know. The Ninja air fry is pretty good, but again, it because it's just like straight lines, you can't just dump fries on it or they'll all just fall through the grates. <laughs> so you have to like lay each fry like this on the thing, so it's kind of annoying. Um... But other than that, if you're just eating small portions, then it'll do okay. Maybe you can get like some kind of basket adapter. I don't know if they sell that. Maybe they do. But um, yeah, that was my review. Um, the Cuisinart does okay. I guess it's better if you want like just large amounts. Um, but it looks like the Philips and the Ninja did a better job with the frying and the taste. Maybe I have to mess around with the settings more. But anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. I forgot the final part of the review so this thing as you can see it's gross and there's a reason for that it's a pain to wash okay so this wire basket it's really hard to wash as you can see we scrub the middle but the sides kind of get messed up I use like a um, Brillo or one of those metal um, metal scrubby pads and that's how I kind of get the stuff out but the area below that's like nearly impossible here you can see like grease gets burnt on it and it's very difficult to wash okay so that's one thing with this keep that in mind all right so we're gonna go ahead and go on to the other ones and let me show you the ninja foodie this thing was 
super easy to clean. Um, I didn't really get much oil burnt onto this metal rack. I'm assuming that if it does burn on there, it's going to be really hard to get out just like the other parts or the other trays. But uh, because it's like a metal wire, you can kind of easily just scrub each one. It comes out really easily. This nonstick uh, bucket, whatever you want to call this, um, it's super easy to clean. The oil just pulled down there. I just added some dish soap, scrubbed it around with a non-scout, non-abrasive um, pad. Um, we have like the blue ones that are safe for non-stick. And it came out really easily. Now let's go on to the Cuisinart. So the Cuisinart is in my sink right now. Um, for my use, because I have so many other devices, I'm most likely going to return this. Um, because I was planning to use this mostly as a big air fryer. But um, if, as you've seen from the video, um, this was the least preferred method of air frying. Um, I don't plan to really cook pizzas or anything much in my ovens. I have a giant convection oven that I use and then I have a gas oven that I haven't used in so long. So most likely I'm not going to end up using all the other features that it has. If you want a single device that does a whole bunch of stuff then this will be great for you. But for me um, it's not going to serve my purpose. Um, so I'm going to return this. Uh, as you can see this tray is in my sink. I tried and tried and tried to get that grease under there out, as you can see. Um, as you can see on here, there's that white, dusty, powdery stuff. What that is, is oven cleaner. <laughs> so I couldn't clean it off by scrubbing it with warm water and soap with um, dish soap. Um, this is basically like those cookie baking pans. If you get grease cooked on it, it burns on. It's really difficult to remove. What I'm using is this um, easy off stuff. Um, usually you use this on the oven and the grill. It's kind of somewhat dangerous to use. You don't want to put it on your, get it on your hands. You want to use gloves and stuff or at least have a lot of running water. I don't know if, I think it's acidic or something. I don't know if that's how it does it, but I used this, be I used it before to clean my oven. It worked really well. So I have a feeling this is going to work. I have to let it sit for about 20 minutes since I let it cool down. I could have just warmed it up and then done it again. But I figured why not just do it while it's cold so I don't have to worry about dealing with a hot pan. But anyways, I sprayed some on the tray and then I sprayed some on this um, basket. And then I'm just going to scrub it off with a sponge and some warm water. Um, so we'll see how that comes off. But again, I tried scrubbing this off. I even tried, excuse me, with some rubbing alcohol, um, which usually gets off like grease-based, oil-based things. Um, but that was really tough to get off, so I'm using the oven cleaner. So we'll see. Again, if you like your stuff looking all nice and shiny, then this will probably be a, an issue for you. Though you could technically just line this tray with foil, and that will probably help you out or get one of those silicone mats. Um, it would have been nice if they used silicone because silicone actually is a lot better. Stuff doesn't really stick to it well, and that probably would have solved that problem. Um... But yeah, if you bake a lot and you don't line this thing with foil, um, then it's probably going to be a problem. And just like with the Philips one that I line the bottom with foil, every so often I just throw that thing out. Um, but it doesn't really affect the cooking since it's all cooking in the basket. Um, so if you're going to cook stuff directly on the tray, just keep that in mind that the oils will burn on it if you cook it at higher temperatures and things like that. So yeah. All right, anyways, we'll leave this sitting for about 20 minutes. I'll scrub it up and then I'll be back. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and see if we can scrub off this gunk. All right, I'm going to use some water and the sponge. I think it's already coming out. All right, here you can see this grease. Most of it's coming out. As you can see, there's still some stuck right there. So I'm probably going to have to spray it a bit more. But let's go ahead and flush it out with water, clean it up. And yeah, there we go. So we're going to use a bunch of water. I need to make sure my hands are flushed out as well because I don't want the acid to eat through my hands. I should be wearing gloves, but I'm lazy. So this is how I'm doing it. All right. But as you can see, that's how it cleans off pretty well. Um, and yeah, if you do this, make sure after you clean this off, you want to use some dish soap and clean it off really well make sure you're not leaving that stuff behind you don't want to get that in your food but um hopefully this helps thanks for watching 
And yeah, I'm most likely going to return this one because I'm probably not going to use it so much. But um, yeah, see you all in the next one. Bye.